Hi, this is Jeffrey Reddick, creator of Final Destination. Greetings, Slashaholics. This is David Bergantino, author of the Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror books, the Bard's Blood Horror Shakespeare books. Hey guys, this is Jason Brooks, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th Vengeance. Hey, this is Slash Forever. Hey everybody, it's CJ Graham, Jason, Friday the 13th Part 6. This is William Patterson, known to Friday the 13th fans as Eric Morris. Hi, this is Deborah Voorhees from Friday the 13th Part 5. Hey folks. This is Adam Marcus, director of Jason Goes to Hell and Secret Santa. <laughs> Hello, kitties. This is John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. Hi, this is Kane Hodder, better known as Jason from Friday the 13th, Victor Crowley from Hatchet. And you're listening. You're listening. And you're listening. And you're listening. I just want to make sure you guys know you're listening. You are listening. And you are listening. And you are lucky enough to be listening. Okay, boils and ghouls, you are listening. You are listening to the 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. The 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. To 80s slasher librarian. To 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. Keep listening, or I'll kill you. So you decided to go with Belinda and trust her. Here's what happened. You decide to trust Belinda. I've never been to sacred ground, you tell her. She reaches for your hand. Come, she says. The ancestors would be kind to you, for they know you saved my life this night. She leads you through the last orchard and across a field to the base of the hills. The ground is covered in deep underbrush, which makes the route difficult as you start to climb uphill. Soon you reach a pass that cuts through the rough terrain. It leads to a small mountain meadow that can't be seen from the orchards or the field. The storm clouds have blown to the east, and the moon shines brightly, reflecting off the drops of water clinging to the blades of grass and turning the meadow into a silver fairyland. It's beautiful, you say. Yes, Belinda agrees. She drops to her knees and bends low, touching her forehead to the ground. She then begins to chant in a low voice. And you know that she is calling on her ancestors. When she is through, she reaches for the bundle. You lean forward for a better look, but as she unfolds the corners of the cloth, you're disappointed. The precious bundle she's been carrying contains some very ordinary things. A feather, a piece of rock, a peach pit, and a clump of dirt. As if sensing your disappointment, Belinda turns to you. Each has its place, she says. The feather gives us wings between this life and the next. The pit perpetuates the growth of all things. She breaks up the clump of earth and lets it sift through her fingers. Warm earth to plant it in. She lays each item on the ground as she speaks. And the rock? you ask Belinda. The rock is to mark the place where we have been, so those who follow will know the way. She moves back to the mouth of the pass and places the rock on the ground. Mark carefully where I have laid it, she says. You don't understand why you should do this, but you take a second look at where she has placed the rock. Come, she says, we must return now. I am glad we had this time together. I will not be here much longer. What, what do you mean, you ask? Are you going somewhere? Yes, she says, to another place. Suddenly, a flash of lightning silhouettes the hills, and thunder rumbles ominously. Another storm is moving in. Fat raindrops begin to fall. The crop will not survive, Belinda says, looking skyward. But it's just a thunderstorm, you say? No, she says, it is more. The ancestors are speaking. She raises her hand in salute as she turns to go into the picker's cabin. Remember the place of the rock, she says, and goodbye. You run the last hundred yards back to the house. You are drenched and shivering. It feels as if the temperature has dropped twenty degrees in the last half hour. You barely make it inside before hailstones, the size of marbles, come crashing to the earth from the black sky. You take a hot shower and crawl into bed exhausted. In the morning, you're glad that Harry isn't there to see the damage. 
as Belinda predicted, the crop did not survive. You take a bicycle from orchard to orchard. Branches are torn from trees, and immature fruit is strewn on the ground like small green pellets. When Harry comes home from the hospital the next day, you and Mrs. Winters fix a bedroom for him downstairs in his office. You spend most of the day in the orchards, picking up fallen branches and pruning off those that hang like wounded appendages from the trees. When you get back to the house, Harry is talking to someone in the office. You take another shower, then wander out to the kitchen to see if dinner is ready. Mrs. Winters is about to leave. Everything's ready to dish up, she says, but don't go in there until his company leaves. Her tone is disapproving. Who's in there, you ask? Bert Fox and his city slicker attorney, that's who, a couple of vultures. They arrived before the last hailstone melted. Who's Bert Fox, you ask? President of the Naldo Corporation, Mrs. Winters says. He wants to buy every piece of land in this township. Do you think Harry will sell his land? You ask Mrs. Winters. He may very well have to, she says, but he'll save the best till last. When I took coffee in, they were just dickering over that little back orchard up against the foothills. Belinda's warning flashes through your mind. He can't sell that, you say. I've got to stop him. You cross the hall and barge into the office. Aha! Uh -huh. What have we here? Says a man standing beside Harry's desk. Didn't anyone teach you how to knock? You know better than to interrupt, Harry says, frowning. I'm sorry, you say, but it's urgent. You mustn't sign anything yet. I need to talk to you first. You look at the two men who are now glowering at you. Privately, you add. Whatever you have to say, Harry replies. Say it now. Mr. Fox and his attorney smile smugly at you. Speak up, says the attorney. What's the urgent news? You weigh the possibilities. Should you risk being laughed at and tell the truth that Belinda, the crazy Indian woman, said not to sell that piece of land? Or should you make up a story that has more clout in order to stall for time? Okay, listeners, the choice is yours. Will you tell the truth? Or will you make up a lie to stall for time? The choice is yours. The path awaits.